Greetings, faithful ones. This is my second lecture on the Biblical Calendar series. In this episode, I'm going to explain what the biblical definition of the year is. I will explain certain Hebrew idioms concerning the year found in the scriptures. Most of them are mistranslated in the typical translations concerning the return of the year, the circuit of the year, the end of days, from days to days, and the time of life. In Genesis 1.14, it says the lights are for signs. These are the lighted sun and the lighted moon. Genesis 1.14 says of the two lights, And they will have been for signs, and for appointed times, and for days and years. The Hebrew here says Moadim. If we try to restrict the meaning of Moadim to the moon only, a contradiction immediately results. They is a plural, as the text says. Both the sun and the moon are for signs and for appointed times and days and years. Therefore, both the sun and the moon determine years, days, and appointed times. Since I am going to focus on the sun, I will quickly mention those functions associated with the moon. A lunar year is so called a year because its length lasts 12 or 13 lunar months and is close to that of a solar year. There are the days of each month and there are appointed times determined by the moon. The text says that they, plural, are for signs or appointed times for days and years. Therefore, the sun has all of these functions. The sun determines the beginning and the end of a literal day. The sun determines the beginning and the end of a calendar day from dawn to dawn, and the beginning and the end of every kind of Sabbath from sunset to sunset or dusk to dusk. The sun also determines the year. The sun also determines the seasons, which are its appointed times. The sun is for years, as I will prove. But the barley teachers I mentioned in the last video have no role for the sun in determining the year. The light from the sun, being a sign for the year, escapes them. They make the new moon of the first month the new year, but this is only a lunar year. Genesis says they, both the sun and the moon, are for years. One Jewish scholar whom I have great respect for is Herb Solinsky. He states that barley responds more readily to heat than to the duration of daylight. And we all know that temperature is not directly proportional to the duration of daylight. The oft-repeated barley teacher excuse to give the sun an indirect role in the determination of the year is further weakened by heat sources from weather not related to the duration of daylight. In fact, at the onset of winter, when it is getting colder, the days are actually getting longer. There is a lag effect in the temperature to daylight equation. So the sun's light, as Genesis 1.14 specifies, is not, in fact, being respected by the barley teachers. Okay, since the sun defines the year, let us get down to the definition of it. I will have to build this for you step by step. So let's start by defining the four cardinal directions. For that, let's go to the screen recorder, and we will look at 1 Chronicles 9.24. So let's make some corrections in this translation and smooth it out. All right, I've straightened out the translation here. To the four winds are the gatekeepers, east, seaward, northward, and southward. In Hebrew, yama, with the directive he on the end, you say yam is the word for sea, so it means toward the sea or seaward. That's the idiom for west. And southward is negeva, another directive he, meaning toward the negev. I want you to notice the word ruhot here, winds, toward the four winds, are the gatekeepers, east, seaward, northward, and southward, for the four cardinal points. Now, logically, the four cardinal points are 
an ev even division of the geography of the earth and of heaven, north going north, south, just as we know them in modern times. Okay, now I want to look at Jeremiah 49, 36. And I will bring against Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. Okay, so we want to notice how the geography of heaven here is described. So we're going to make a few corrections in this translation. All right, here are the corrections. Then I will have made come, perfect, against Elam, four winds from the four ends of the heavens, or the limits of the heavens. So we've corrected principally this word katsot here, which is in the plural construct. Actually, the word of goes over here, so let's fix that. Then I will have made come against Elam four winds from the four ends of the heavens, or from the four limits of the heavens. Katsot Hashemayim. So we understand that these katsot here, or ends or limits of the heavens, are the four cardinal directions. Notice the word ruchot here which is used in parallel with the other text from Chronicles. The four winds represent the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Notice this word, consult. This will become important because this designates the cardinal directions, the ends or limits of the heavens. In Isaiah 11:12, the cardinal directions are referred to as the four corners of the earth, from the four corners of the earth. Okay, here I've looked up the word lying behind katsot, which is plural for ends or limits of, and it's from the word katsa, katsa, which means an end or an, a limit or a boundary of some sort. Okay, now in Psalm 19.6, we're going to apply what we learned from the other verses. So let's start by correcting the translation. Mi katsa, which is from the word katsa, which means an end. The word one doesn't belong here, and it's construct, and the of goes over here, so let's fix all of this. From the end of, or the limit of, the heavens. Now we know from our study of the other passage that the end has to be one of the cardinal points. And since in this context we're talking about the sun, it has to be east or west. And since it's Speaking of going forth here, it's talking about the east limit here. From the end or the limit of the heavens. Mikatse. Mikse. Another poor translation. From the end limit of the heavens is its going forth. And its circuit, we could perhaps put an alternative or improve this translation here. All right, here we go. From the end of the heavens or from the limit of the heavens, is its going forth. And its circuit, or coming round, is at their end limits. We need to put in another is here. All right, so this obviously has to be the eastern cardinal point here. From the end limit of the heavens, is its going forth, speaking of the sun, and its coming round, or circuit, that is when it completes a circuit, is against or at their end limits. It's important here that it says their ends here, plural, or their limits, katsotam. The reason is, is because its daily circuit begins in the east and ends in the west. So if it was speaking of a daily circuit, then you would expect a singular here. But it's plural here. Utakufoto al katsotam. Okay, I've simplified the translation considerably here. From the end of the heavens is its going forth, and its coming round is at their ends. Now what I want to notice you to notice here is that this word is plural, katsot, and it has a plural pronoun at the end, their ends. Okay, and their is referring to the heavens. So it's the katsot of the heavens, as we read in the other text. 
which are the cardinal directions. And in this case, it has to be two of the ends, east and west, in the plural. It has to be both east and west. And it's coming round. The tukufa, or the, the making a circuit of the sun, is at the extreme points, the cardinal points, east and west. That's what this is saying. From the end of heavens, this refers to the easternmost point, is its going forth. That is, it's setting out. It's speaking of an annual circuit here. And the annual circuit starts when the sun is east and west. Now I want to show you that in Hebrew idiom, a year is considered so many days, so much so that the phrase days can be used to stand for one year. And David dwelt in the country of the Philistines one year and four months. But as we see, the phrase translated one year is yamim in Hebrew. So literally, it means days. Literally, yamim, days meaning a cycle of days, which is equivalent to one year. This text in 1 Samuel 27, 7 is not a fluke. Let's look at another text like this. Here again, in Exodus 13, 10, we see it. From year to year. But that's not literally what it says. It says from days to days. Miyamim, yamima, the directive he, which means two. Attachment of the he here means two days. And the preposition mean, shortened to mean, and means from. From days to days. Each set of days being considered a whole year. So from year to year is the meaning of the idiom. But it's expressed in so many days. So that just phrase days, yamim, is equivalent to a year. We see here in Genesis 4.3 another mistranslation. And it came to pass in the course of time. This is a very ambiguous, watered-down translation. Let's fix it. So here it is. Then it is after the end of days, meaning after the end of the days of the year, or after the year had renewed itself. Then they brought their offerings. So again, days is being used for a year. And we see that it has an end point. The end point is, again, the word katsa, or kates, the end of, meaning the cardinal points, east and west. Okay, in Second Chronicles 21.19, we have a beautiful text for illustrating all of this. Then it is, at days from days, and according to the time of the going out of the end, or the days, two, literally two years. So, this text again is showing that the word days is used to stand for a year. At days, meaning at the head of the days of the new years, from the days, or from the days of the old year, according to the time of the going out of the end for the days, that is for the days of the years. Two, two sets of them, meaning two years, had gone out his intestines, Jehoram of Judah. Elijah had told him that he would die of a sickness, and this is what happened at the spring equinox. And the play on words here is uh, the going out of the end of days, or the days of the year, then his intestines also went out at the same time. So literally it is, la yamim miyamim, at days from days, which designates the spring equinox, or the end of the days of the year. And Hakates is the extreme limit. It goes out at the limit, the Katso, the east and the west. Now we're in 1 Samuel 1.20, and here I want to show you, again, another mistranslation. So let's fix it first. All right, here we go. Then it is, at the great circuit of the days, then Hannah conceives, then she bears a son. So we have three elements to the timeline here. The great circuit of days, then Hannah conceives, then she bears. So she conceives first, then she bears. But before all of this is the great circuit of the days. If she was keeping track of her time, then she conceived on the spring equinox. As people in ancient times did mark such days, and they would notice them. Why is the Tekufo translated at the great circuit? Because... Tekufo here is in the plural, literally, at the circuits of the days. But since we knew, know that Hannah only conceived once, 
It must mean the great circuit of the days, or an intensive plural. In other words, it means the spring equinox, which happens at the cardinal end of heaven, the east and west line, on the day of spring equinox, the beginning of the year. A great circuit being the long circuit of days of 365 or 366 days. Now we will see that year and days are equated in another text here. A tekufo hayami. Here in Exodus 34.22, we will have to fix the translation again in the last two words here. Tekufat hashanah. The circuit of the year. You can put the definite article in because this is definite. But it's also generic. Like the cow eats grass means cows eat grass. Well, here it means tekufat hashamah. Hashanah can mean the same thing as the circuit of a year, the circuit of the year. What we need to notice here is that the circuit of the year is not the fall equinox. This is the cycle of all the feasts fall in the circuit of a year. In other words, one year. So this phrase actually applies to all the feasts when they're, when they're gathering in their harvest at all feasts. And we see it emphasized in the next verse. Three times in the year, all your men shall appear before Adonai Yahweh. So this is the circuit of a year, the three times in the year, which starts in the spring. All right. And this text will establish that the return of the year or the start of the year is in the spring, at the spring equinox, when the sun is at the cardinal point, the limit or the end of heaven on the east, at the ends on the east-west line in the spring. But we can fix this translation. Here it is. Then it is at the return of the year, at the time of going out of the kings, namely going out to war. That's when the kings go out, as is evident from the context, because a war happens here. But to Shuvat Hashanah. So the year returns in the spring, at the time that kings go out. The going out of kings. This is another generic article here, meaning any kings whatsoever. This is showing that the year begins in the spring, at the return of the year. That's when the new year returns and the old year goes out. Okay. Let's summarize our points. I'm going to try to squeeze way over here so that we can fit them on the screen. Drink some of my coffee, too. Okay, the first point that I made was that east, west, north, and south are at the four winds of heaven, the four cardinal points, as the gatekeepers or the doorkeepers in the temple were assigned according to these directions. The second point is that the four winds correspond to the four cardinal points of heaven, the four ends of heaven, the four ends of heaven, as we discovered in that text. In Psalm 19.6, we learn that the sun goes forth from the end of heaven, which is due east. It sets out on its annual cycle or circuit, due east on the day of the equinox. We also learn that it comes around to those cardinal points, east and west, at the end of the year. In Genesis 4.3, we learn that the year has an end, at the end of days, meaning the days of the year. We also learn from Exodus 13.10 that a year is measured in terms of days, from days unto days. From 1 Samuel 27.7, we learn that a year is a number of days. In 1 Samuel 1.20, we learn that Hannah conceived Samuel at the great circuit of the days, which is the spring equinox. In Exodus 34.22, we learn that the three feasts are celebrated within the circuit of the year. Now we'll go back to the screen recording, and I'll show you the distinctions and meaning between at the circuit of the year and the circuit of the year. And we will also bring Exodus 23.16 into the picture. Okay, now I want to use Second Chronicles 24.23 to start my explanation of the difference between the word tekufat without a preposition and with a preposition. Here we have a lamed in front of it here. Then it is at the circuit of the year. So when the preposition is on attached to the word, it means at the circuit of the year. 
In other words, it's the beginning point on the circuit that it's talking about. Now, let's go to the concordance and look up all the other references. All righty. The word tekufa, a coming round, circuit, is used in four places in the scriptures. It's used in Exodus 34.22 without a preposition. This is very important. It's used in 1 Samuel 1.20 with a preposition. It's used in the passage that we just discussed, 2 Chronicles 24.23, with a preposition. And it's used in Psalm 19.6 without a preposition. The distinction is this. When the word is used without a preposition, it refers to the whole circuit. When it's used with a preposition, it refers to just the spring equinox day, or the beginning point of the circuit. Therefore, in Exodus 34.22, it refers to the whole circuit of the year in which the three feasts are celebrated, the three pilgrim feasts. It's a synonym or a parallelism to three times in the year you shall celebrate a feast. In 1 Samuel 1.20, it means the day of the spring equinox. In 2 Chronicles 24.23, it also means the day of the spring equinox. In Psalm 19.6, it means the whole circuit of the year. The first clause in the verse refers to its going forth at the extremity from the eastern point. So that would refer to the spring equinox day. And its circuit is upon the limits of it, or unto, or over the limits. In other words, the circuit of the year passes over to the limits of east and west at the end of days. Now I want to bring Exodus 23.16 into the picture. It has already mentioned the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the preceding verses. Now it mentions, in verse 16, the Hag HaKatsir, and the Feast of the Harvest. This is the same as Shavuot. And then it mentions the Feast of Ingathering, Ha'asif, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. And then comes a phrase which has confused many. But Sait Hashana, in the going forth of the year. The verb Sait can mean the going forth or the going out. And this is what has confused people, is they don't realize that in the going forth of the year refers to the whole circuit of the year, the whole of the days of the year. And you can see this in the next phrase, in your gathering of your labors. This is actually mistranslated in the past tense here because this is an infinitive construct. So let's fix this. Okay, now I've repaired the damage that the interlinear did here. In the going forth of the year, while you gather your labors from the field. They're gathering their labors during all three feasts. And the three feasts are already mentioned in the phrase before this clause comes in. So in the going forth of the year means from the spring equinox point, because that's when the year goes forth. While you gather, infinitive construct here, all the labors from the field. They start gathering the labors right on the day after Passover, when they are allowed to consume the barley, and the barley harvest begins in earnest. So once again, this phrase does not mean the fall equinox. It means in the going forth of the year. It means the equivalent phrase is found in Exodus 34.22, where it says, the cycle of a year, or the circuit of the year, Tekufat HaShanah. So that's equivalent to this phrase. And Tekufat HaShanah refers to the cycle of the year also, without the Lamed. 